legally in America and in certain other countries, anyone that makes mead first is a winery. So we have what's called a basic permit from the TTB or the, the Alcohol, Tobacco, Tax and Trade Bureau at the federal level. We have a series 13 winery license from the state of Arizona. And so everything that we make in here is, is classified as a type of wine. A honey wine, an apple wine, a cider, a mead. There are all these different things we can do as a winery. Um, one thing that we can't do is use cereal grains like a brewery would use. We also can't have a still unless we had a different license to do those things. And so that's really how the government divides and conquers alcohol producers. And there are different taxes for distilleries and for beer and for all the different types of wine, cider, mead that we make. So that's really why we have this opportunity here to, to go beyond what we've become known for, making some of the most flavorful, crazy, inspired meads the world's ever known, and really the top rated hard cider in the world, Blueberry Spaceship Box, we're now making wine. We're using our mead making skills, we're using a wine press, our crusher to stemmer, we're using the noble instruments of winemaking right here in our production facility combined with our proprietary yeast and fermentation techniques to create some amazing wines. But what's really unique about this process is that we are aging wines in mead barrels, something no one else is doing. This is literally the first time myself or anyone in the world has had a Pinot Noir from California aged in a mead barrel. So let's take another taste. Rich dark fruit, dark cherry, a lot of tannin coming out of the grapes. But the tannin is balanced with this silky mouthfeel that's coming out of the staves. This barrel is American oak. It actually is from Missouri. It has rather, it's fairly tight grain for Missouri oak, but rather, rather uh, narrow grain for what I would expect from, from a lot of the Missouri oak barrels we have. And the wider the grain, the faster it's gonna impart the characteristics of the wood itself, which could be tannins from the oak, a woody flavor, and then even vanilla and different spices. And so this barrel was made in 2017. It's approaching neutral barrel status. A neutral barrel means that we've aged things in this barrel throughout the years and we've extracted most of the flavor that the staves can impart. And what's really unique though is that whatever was in here before, it kind of creates this pedigree, this lineage of flavors that are inside the wood. And if we were to take this barrel apart and you looked at the profile of the stave, you would see about a quarter of an inch of like, like the, these lines, these stratified lines of the different products that have been in there. And through temperature and humidity changes, the liquid's gonna go in and out of the staves. And as we move these barrels to different places within our barrel facility, as we need to access things, for example, that's also gonna affect that, the movement, but really the temperature, the humidity, and alcohol itself is a solvent and it's gonna extract those flavors. Now, I'm not expecting to get an assertive oak character and I'm not getting it from this. And that's actually really kind of nice because a lot of times that assertive oak flavor is full of tannin. We have enough tannin from the grape in here. And so we've decided consciously to pair what we believe would be a really nice Pinot Noir character and round it out by exposing it to what was in here before, which was a piment. And a piment is when you ferment wine grapes and honey together. And in this case, we took California Cabernet wine grapes and Arizona wildflower honey and aged that for two years in this barrel. And so the longer that this Pinot is mixing in there, there's actually currents that happen and we're going in and out of the staves. We're gonna keep rounding out the tan tannic profile of the Pinot and adding another layer of complexity. And one of the definitions of being good when you're talking about a craft beverage, a wine, a beer, a mead, or even a, a, a dish at a restaurant is when you have different layers of flavor that you experience from the, the first smell of it to the first taste to how it crosses your palate to the finish when you're actually kind of talking and you can feel the flavors coming off of your palate. Let's see how this is going to finish. I mean, you get hit with this tannin and then it's black cherry and leather. And as I'm talking right now, 
those volatile aromatic compounds. They're swirling around your mouth, you're exhaling them, and you can feel that kind of fuzzy tannic structure even with the mouthfeel on the sides of your tongue that you get from, from really bold reds. I think this is destined to be a really nice wine. Cheers.